Hi, I'm Kate, and today we're going to have a deep dive into the codex feature of Novel Crafter. So, what is the codex? This is where you store everything that there is to know about the novel. Your characters, your locations, any lore. Here, take a look. If we go on New Entry, we can see all the different categories that we have thus far for creating codex entries. It's always there in a handy sidebar and is ready to help you keep track of everything. You can search through it to find any information you need at a glance. It's here in this handy sidebar, which you can collapse if you want to do larger bits of writing and focus just on this. However, it is also very simple to get out. Your codex entries also come out as a pop-out window if you click on them, or for a quick reference, you can click on the codex entry's name within your write or plan or tinker interfaces. So there are multiple different types of codex entry. Uh, which one you use depends on what the category of, uh, of topic is. So the first and your probably main category is the characters. These can be your primary characters or simply one-off people uh, that get mentioned in your story. Even if you have someone appear for a single scene, you don't really want to confuse the reader by having like five Derricks or something over the course of your series. Keeping track of everyone helps with this. Think of characters not just as individual humans or, or people, um, but also as animals or anyone that pushes the story forward. You know, for example, like a very special dog or cat. Here in my uh, Hades and Persephone romance novel, Cerberus is a very active feature in the novel and so gets his own codex entry. Next, we have locations. These can range from rooms to places to towns, countries, planets, galaxies. Anything that gets visited physically can be included in here. Objects or items. Essentially things like King Arthur's sword, magic wands for wizards, special relics. Um, so here I just have um, a couple of the main items that are spoken about through uh, this story implemented here. Lore. Any special magic system, species or races, religion, world building can all go here. For example, here I have the pomegranate um, from the Hades and Persephone myth. And whilst this could be classed as an item, I chose to put it in the law section because there's a greater uh, symbolic presence throughout the novel. And finally, other. This is the place for anything that you're not entirely sure what category it could go into. These could be corporations, clans, gangs, or anything that you want to group together. Families. You can also put in here the entries for your style guide or additional genre information. Um, for example, in Court in the Underworld, um, I have some keywords to help guide the AI. Um, but you can put anything you want here. So what makes up a codex entry? There are two main sections that you'll want to look at. There is the description within the details page, and then there is the notes section. The description includes anything that you want the AI to know, whereas the notes section is for you to keep track of yourself. In my opinion, it's best to start off with something simple and then see how the AI interacts with this and then build up your codex entries. The AI can pull out a lot of things, so definitely experiment. Whilst there is no word limit within this section, putting the smallest amount of information that you can to get the results you want is generally the best idea because the AI will read the codex entries of any item or any codex mentioned in your beats. And so to keep the total token count down is advisable. Of course, if you're using a free model, this doesn't matter as much. If we have a look here at my codex entries for another story, um, you can see that the notes section is way more detailed, including things like physical appearance and stuff that I want to keep track of, but the AI doesn't necessarily need to know. Another question we get asked a lot is how to format these codex entries. There isn't a set, um, there isn't an inbuilt uh, method that Novel Crafter requires, so it's up to personal preference. Um, I generally go for a categorised system so that I can keep it um, consistent through my codex entries. Um, you can see here that I go over strengths, flaws, how they react to different situations. Um, however, you could also go for 
a more kind of um, paragraph block method, um, which I did in courting, um, which is just a brief paragraph that gives the AI a general um, overview. I would definitely advise just playing around and finding out what works for you, which may not always be the answer that you want to hear, but it's so true. Um, the AI, or AI in general, reacts very differently depending on what model you're using and what style of prose you like. And so playing around with this is the best way to kind of have that deep dive and know exactly what you want. So what do you do if you want to um, group a set of characters together? For example, if they're in the same family or um, organization or cult or, or whatever. You could um, group them by color if you want it to be something that only um, you keep track of or you could also go into the tags system so in the tags and labels um there are a set of presets um for example like your protagonist antagonist however you can also write your own just by typing in this will then add the tag to your um, codex entry and uh, for example I've got the Villier family here and it means I can keep track of all the members of this family. I could also group them all under the brown or red or, or whatever. The aliases and nicknames uh, section is also essential to fill in. But whilst your codex entry title might have the full name of a character or um, other words that you use more often for example um, in some of mine I have like the secretary or the librarian, just so that I can know who they are if I don't remember their names as often. However, you want to make sure that the AI picks up every time this character is mentioned. For example, for Luciana, I have not only her name and surname, but also the title by which she's referred to, so that any time that gets mentioned in the codex entry, the AI picks it up and highlights it within my story. This is also helpful when certain species or races inside a fantasy story call the same thing by a different name due to cultural differences. So what do you do if you have a codex entry that is related to another codex entry? This is where nested references comes up. For example, Luciana is a member of the Villier family, therefore I might want to have her there. So in the Villier family entry I have all the members of the family here, so that whenever the Villier family gets mentioned as a whole, these characters will get pulled up as a reference. Likewise, Luciana is a proxy and is the proxy for Ven. And in this story, it's very important that the role that she plays in the story kind of is as big a point, or like the role that she takes on in the story is as integral to her as her own personal uh, characteristics. And so therefore, every time that Luciana gets mentioned, the AI will also have the context of what a proxy is and where she is from. If you're making a character that is in multiple books within your series, um, it's very simple to add them. You simply go to the, the little action menu and click move to series. This way you can see which characters are part of your entire series and also this works for locations, lore, etc or ones that just turn up in the specific book you're looking at. And there's also the all view for your entire story. It's very simple to move these entries to or from the series interface. What are global entries? These are items in your codex that the AI will always consider when um, running through your prompts. For example, here I have the story genre as a global codex entry. However, if, say, there's um, a setting that it's very important to know facts, well, for example, if you're doing a story set in hell and it's always going to be hot and that's something that characters always feel, um, then you might want to make that into a global codex entry. As you're writing a story, you might find that you want to add changes to your character but not necessarily have the AI always refer to that change. Uh, for example, if you like writing your story out of order, um, you might find that you're writing a chapter that's in the second half of the book after a character has gained some magic powers or something before you're writing 
the area before, like when they don't have these powers. Um, this is where the codex editions come in. Um, simply go forward slash codex edition and select your character and you can add these changes. For example, in the Wolf in Red, um, I have a time skip and so I have talked about the personality changes and the age differences in red in the prologue and in this scene. These codex entries then, or these codex progressions then get shown in the additions section and so will only be read by the AI after this point. Good examples for additions are if a character gets married or divorced, a location gets ransacked, a character gets a new job, or an important item gets lost during shipping or becomes owned by a different character. The AI can get confused easily, however, so try to keep these codex editions simple and if you have any issues as you're generating uh, text, just add them into the main codex entry and kind of be that senior writing partner and, you know, check your codex entries every time um, it gets a fact wrong. The additions are meant for major progressions or changes. They're not meant to replace plot points as these should be included in scene summaries or beats. 